Hi, I'm Adam with AdvancedDimensions.com. I'm going to show you a simple video of what's after you scan for a countertop. So I've taken the 3D Disto out, I've scanned my walls, and now what's the next step? Currently I'm using AutoCAD, um, however this will work with any CAD software um, as you're just going to open up the DWG file or the DXF file that the 3D Disto software exports. I'm just going to step through these and show you how, how it works for me and when I go out and I do my scanning. So here I have a, um, a room that needed to be scanned and there was going to be a countertop on, on three sides. Now this is a pretty simplistic countertop in concept in terms of what it looks like, but, uh, but it was extremely expensive material and the customer wanted to make sure that everything was perfect and that we weren't going to have any issues. It was just going to install and everything was fine. So um, that's why they hired me to scan. It was worth them paying the extra money to have that done, to know that the installation would just fall into place after it was cut on the CNC machine, which you can see on the right side of the screen. Um, everything just fell into place because that's what we do with the 3D Disto. We don't, we're not just scanning the countertop to cut it. We're scanning the countertop to eliminate the installation uh, time. So I'm gonna start with what I had as raw data. So you can see here, um, this is the raw data that comes from the unit. And there's a whole bunch of X's where each measurement point was taken. And then there's a whole bunch of numbers here which, which show us um, the, the numbers of the points. So if I wanted to select these, they all come in pretty large and we could now see them as actual numbers. Those are the numbers of the points that were measured. The X's, just to note where a measurement was taken, these are all just in a layer. So if I wanted to, I could turn off the point identifications and I could turn off that X and now we can see this is, a, this is the wall perimeter that I scanned. This part here is just a connection from the corner that was there that I didn't really care about and the corner that was here that I didn't really care about. So more of a start and a stop point than anything else. So what I did with this information is I scanned about every, it varied on the straight parts I did about two inches as we got to the corner, um, I went to one inch. Right now I'm actually doing a di little bit differently. This, was a, this is a few years old. Um, right now I'm scanning in the corners at half an inch intervals and then on the on the flat walls every two inches I would have done on this particular project just because of the cost of the material but on a standard like plastic laminate countertop every four inches is fine three to four inches is fine it just makes your scan time a little bit longer but it's going to give you a better picture of what the walls are doing so I've taken this information and I've copied it I just I just turned off those layers and I just copied this and I stuck it in this worksheet and that's what this is right here I, I scaled down the the points and I scaled down the the numbers here but that's what this is the only thing that's different is if you remember there was a line connecting right here that's at the top in this I just rotated this 180 degrees so that I could work on it this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step through this process with the original data and just show you how, how easy it is. Typically it takes you know 15 to 20 minutes to scan a countertop and it takes me less than 10 to do this. It's gonna take a little bit longer now just because I'm explaining it, but you'll see. So I'm gonna copy this down 200 and now I'm going to start stepping through the motion. So this is the raw data. These are just lines. Uh, the points are kind of in between where the lines are connected. So what I want to do first is I want to just turn off my points and I want to turn off my ID, um, which is red. There we go. So now I just have my lines and when I select it, you'll see it's just selected 190 lines. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it. And I copy things because, and I'm gonna copy it over 150 or 200 or 400, just something that I can easily recall. And then when I hover over it, like I just did, I can see. So now that I've copied it over, I can turn those original points and IDs back on. 
And so the reason why I do this is what happens if, you know, I delete something and I'm editing it and I realize, oh shoot, that was a mistake. I can come back to the original, grab it, copy it, and bring it over 165, and it's gonna give me that information again. So, and then this would just be multiples of that, of whatever that first one is. So I like to do it like that. So this represents the walls. And the only thing that I really need to do on this, because I'm gonna be cutting my countertop exactly, or I'm gonna be cutting my countertop with this information, not exactly to this, and I'll tell you why, um, is I just need, to, just need to clean this up and join them together. So in AutoCAD, um, we can take a couple of lines and we can do extend. Um, and so I can extend this line and extend this line, and then I can trim. And that represents that bottom corner. You can see here the countertop was not part, like it didn't matter what that corner was doing. So that wall that's there doesn't really matter. It's really just for uh, just for show. And then this was a corner. You can see it here. This was a corner that went back. And my countertop offset from here two inches. So I didn't really care about continuing this way. I just cared about where the exact corner was. So this point that's here is the exact corner and so i'm just going to pull this this way it doesn't really matter just a little bit that way so now i just do a little bit of wall cleanup this is me i'm a little ocd when it comes to autocad and now i want to take these individual lines and i want to join them together to make one continuous polyline so i'm just going to highlight them all type in join and now these are a continuous polyline looks like we had looks like we have a little bit of an overlap here. So easiest way to fix this is just pull this out, hover over it until you get that box. And now I'll hit join again. Sometimes I'm not sure why, but, and now that's a continuous polyline all the way around. Now in this case, I offset for the shading. I'm gonna skip that step. Um, now I'm gonna get into the countertop. So I'm gonna copy this again, cause now I have my clean walls. 165. Oh, now I changed it. Jeez, I don't know what I was thinking before. It doesn't matter. I'm going to continue with the 165. And now I need to now I need to start figuring out where my countertop is going to be. So there's a few things that I've gleaned off of the architecturals that are going to judge how things are working here. One thing is this back counter is got a target depth of 24 inches. This is a desk. The side counters only have a target of 20 inches. Now in this particular countertop, there this is a solid, or this was a wood countertop, um, and they had a solid edging on it. I won't, I won't assume that in my, uh, in my walkthrough of this, just because uh, we'll save a couple of steps and the concept is still the same. So I got a 20 inch counter on the left and the right, and a 24 inch on the back. From here, from the corner, it is coming down two inches, or it's offset two inches there, and on this corner, it's offset six inches. And then we got some miters, so that's what we're gonna work with for the countertop for this next step. So what we've done is we've scanned the real world. The real world is crazy. It's, it's crooked, it's not square, it's not true. And so what we need to do is we need to kind of bring in, just like we would if we were bringing in our real material that's perfect and nice, and we were scribing it to the walls, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it in AutoCAD. So what I need to do is I need to develop some straight lines that we can work off of. And those are called construction lines in AutoCAD, and the command is Excel. If, you if you're using a different CAD program, type in construction line, you could use a normal line. I use construction lines. And I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna do a horizontal one. So this gives me a line that goes forever and ever horizontally. And I'm gonna just pick a point on the back. Doesn't really matter where, just pick a point. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it vertically. So here's a vertical point and a vertical point on this side. And what we'll notice when I zoom in, see the wall goes in, the wall goes out, the wall goes in, the wall goes out. There's deviations. Well, the front of our countertop can't do that. The front of our countertop's gotta be straight like this line that I just drew is. Same with this. So this one, we got a little bit of a deviation in on this side and out on this side. 
And I came to find out that when I straightened that this room out, everything got a little wonky. So that's really the way the wall goes. So I'm going to just leave it that way because these two lines here, this line and this line are parallel, uh, pretty, pretty close to parallel. When you, when you go down through here, you can see it goes in and goes out, but it's pretty close. If we zoom, zoom really in and I take a measurement on this deviation, we're at, you know, we're at. 0 0.00092 so it's really tiny deviation so anyways that's that's these are representing the front edge of the countertop so what i need to do is i need to offset my 24 inches in the front or in, the, in that one offset 20 inches here and 20 inches here now we can kind of trim this up and now i can actually delete these original ones and now I've established the front edge of my countertop being square and true and nice while still maintaining that back edge. One thing I didn't do in the previous step is sometimes when you're scanning uh, and you're doing an auto scan, you'll miss a corner. And that's why you can see this little clip right here. And so what I do is I just come back and I square that out. Some people try to actually pinpoint the exact corner. And I find that that method is... Um, tedious and it doesn't really give you better results than what I've what I'm doing right here so um, so my next step is let's figure out where this line is going to get cut and this line is going to get cut so I'm going to do another X line horizontal and I'm going to pick it to there and I'm going to pick it to their corner and remember this was two inches so I'm going to offset two inches delete that first line and this was six inches so I'm going to offset six inches and delete this line and now I can just trim these up and trim these up and so now I have my and I'll trim to the back here too now I have my front edge established and I can join this so it's one continuous polyline and my back established which is actually what's happening with the wall I'm gonna copy this again just because I like seeing the steps 165 so now the next step is we got to kind of clean this up between the front and the back and what's getting cut the the thing that I've found is you don't want to actually cut to the exact wall because what happens is uh, the counters would get so tight that they wouldn't fit because it's a perfect fit so what I do is I offset and I offset anywhere between a 32nd and a 16th of an inch. So we'll go a 16th of an inch just so you can see it. Sometimes 32nd gets a little small. And then when I offset, I zoom right, right in. And I just make sure that I'm pulling to the right side of the line. So now I can come and I can do some trimming. So this is going to look the same when I zoom out, just maybe a little bit thicker. So I can come in. And I really want this ed, uh, this line here, oops, this line to trim like that. That's the end of my countertop on this side. And this is the end of my countertop on this side. So now I have my wall. I have my scribe cut, a 16th of an inch offset. And then I have my front edge of the countertop. So I'm going to do one last thing. I'm just going to join this together and highlight it make sure it says it's closed and we're going to copy it one more time again I'm, I'm copying more than i would normally but i just like to see the steps here so the next thing i have to do is this is really two different countertops this is or three different countertops and we're going to have a miter right here but i don't want the miter to be 45 because it's going to look like that it's going to kind of look weird and i don't want it to be another angle because it's going to look weird i actually just want it to go right to that corner same with this one, right to that corner. And then in order to get these separated, I'm gonna copy them. And this is, we're gonna copy them out and then copy them back. So one, we'll do 150 and then we'll do 300. And I didn't need to do that, but that's all right. So and then I'm gonna just trim because I'm gonna make these separate. So I'm gonna grab these guys and these ones I'm gonna trim here. And these ones I'm gonna trim here join those back together because in the end we need continuous polylines which we have for each one of these so now I can move this in 150 and move this in 150 
So now, so I've gone from raw wall, cleaned up wall, cleaned up wall with the front edges. Now I've isolated what the countertop's gonna be. And now I've got my three separate countertops. Then I take these and I nest them on my CNC machine, cut to those or break them up and then any pieces that they needed to be broken up into. But this shape, this, this, this boundary is exactly what needs to get cut on the CNC machine. Once you cut those, it'll just literally fall into place. I just installed countertops myself for a project that I was working on as a volunteer type project. And I was helping out with the cabinet side of things. I installed a 12 foot countertop and we had it all scribed in and we lifted it up into place and we just dropped it right down. It was fantastic. Uh, it, it was just made everything so much easier because if we would have had to scribe it, we would have had to pick it up and hold it at an angle and scribe the one side and then take it out and then switch it and scribe the other side and then get it to fit. And it's going to probably not fit the greatest. And we didn't put any molding. We didn't do anything. It just fell into place. And, um, and that was that. So, so this was the countertop. There was a few of them. This was the countertop and it was wall to wall. These were pl lath and plaster walls so that they, they were just not lath and plaster. They were just actually plaster because this was a school and this was just all over the place. Um, and then this corner here had a notch for some trim that was there that was existing. This is what it looks like. I did a 16th of an inch offset and it looks like, oh yeah, that just looks like a nice straight wall. No, this is actually what the wall was doing. See up here, the, up, up above. That's a straight line. That's how crazy that wall is. That countertop lifted into place, dropped, dropped right in. So um, hopefully this video helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, I'm Adam with AdvancedDimensions.com. You can always email me at Adam at AdvancedDimensions.com or, uh, or give us a call. Uh, thanks for watching.